What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Quake Pro League. My name is Ketchup, and I'm joined at last by the one and only Flea. Mate, I missed you. It's been a really long time, and it's nice to be back doing this together, right? It has been, yeah. I feel like we've both gossiped with everyone else except for with each other for this season, so it's really good to be back on the mic. Yeah, I definitely, definitely agree. Not with me, I mean with you, of course. I'm not that <laughs> okay. egotistical, I promise. Um, but hey, look, it's been a wonderful set of weeks and even last week's action was absolutely fantastic with some rather big results for some players. I know we have a recap as we do every single show going over what happened last time. And I mean, this week, very much a continuation of that. But standout performances, I think that is the main topic to discuss over this upcoming couple of minutes because some players are probably feeling pretty good others probably on the opposite end of things probably so yeah we started off last week with Kron versus Wenger Kron continuing his unfortunate losing streak dropping all three maps against the maestro man followed then by strong sage versus Rafa the battle for the Americas Strong Sage making a valiant effort. We've seen him put on some really good results against some of the best players in the world, but Rafa proved to be a little too strong as he walked away with all three maps. And a result that is very typical of Rafa. I know the two of them, um, I'm, I'm fairly positive they have been sort of practicing together here and there, and that really just comes down to how hungry Strong Sage is as a player, right? Is to uh, try and do as much as he can to push forward and become the best he can be, which is really what you want to do as an up-and-coming talent uh, in this, this competitive space, especially a game like Quake, which is as legacy-heavy as it has been. Now, Dramis versus Chain. This was going to be another one here. Going to be seeing more of Dramis today. In fact, we're seeing Dramis in our first ever matchup. Following that, Tox versus Saigib. And <laughs> that's a nice little ring out anyway. Nice shot there. Some good plays as always. Toxic versus Saigib, if I remember correctly. Tox took home the win 2-1. to one. Battle of the Brawlers. Two very aim heavy players. Turned out that Tox had his number, though. The LG. Still supremely powerful, carrying him to the win. It's something that you always grow to see from Tox, that game-changing aim, which sometimes that's kind of all that's there, and sometimes there's a, a little bit more in the tank, I suppose, and that's the kind of Tox that you always want to see here. Maxter versus Avec, our next matchup. Avec, a player that we're not going to be seeing today. Um, the, the match, I believe, that Avec's featuring in is rescheduled, so you'll be seeing that a little bit later down the line. All of the matches you can catch on the official Quake YouTube channel, so always make sure you're sticking out for that one. Razy versus Nosfer afterwards. Again, Razy has a big match to play today, Flea. Oh, yeah. He absolutely does. We're gonna get to that a bit later, but we're going to see one of the most common grand finals play out later. And then also the last one of last week, Sirius versus Zeneku. Sirius has actually been putting up some really convincing results, and kept his head in the game, right? Especially during that last series against Zeneku. It could have been 2-1 for series. It came down to the wire on the first two maps, but ultimately the maestro man Zeneku walked away with the win. And that then catch up brings us to the matches for today. Which is very, very interesting. I mean, you can look at the results there. Some rather consistent victories as a, a huge spread of three zeros. Not incredibly common. I think we're, we've definitely reached a point in the Quake Pro League now, especially years down the line. Players are able to at least kind of conquer maybe that one map. Obviously, that's not going to be enough for players. They always want that overall series win. And especially now, we're in that position where, you know, we're having to look at the, the final stretch. Players wanting to get the best possible chance in the finals. And on the opposite end of that, players really trying to avoid being in the, the, the scarier position, you know, when you're right. on the, the lower end of the leaderboard, which is uh, going to bring with it a new mental challenge that most people aren't going to have to experience. You know, that fight starts earlier than most. Now, looking at the world rankings, we're getting a clear example over who is currently on top. That man is Rafa. And it's a great story for Rafa. He hasn't been uh, in this absolute dominant position for a little bit and the work ethic is really starting to show. Rafa has just been complete practice, complete focus. Uh, he has another major matchup today going up against Razy and it is top heavy leaderboard with our featured matches. Wenger versus Zeneku is the second to last one of the day. I mean all four of these players are in top four territory. This is where 
it gets really serious because it's not just points or prize money, it's how am I shaping up versus the best of the best as we are now not too far away from the finals. Bit of a disclaimer there though, Rafa, yes, he is in the first place, but when looking at the top five, he's also played more matches than anyone else at the top of the leaderboard, right? So Rafa has played 11 games, whereas some of the others have only played nine or 10 within the top five. So he does have a little bit of just that natural lead from having played more games, but still it's undeniable that he's in top shape and that the practice is really paying off. Now, I mean, there's not much left to do but start talking about our first matchup, and this is going to be Hron versus Dramis. Hron in a position where he really needs to get himself some kind of win here, and yeah. Dramis, the kind of player that I imagine is feeling pretty confident going into this. Dramis is naturally an extremely confident player anyway. I know his results recently haven't completely echoed that. However, with these two players head-to-head -head in particular, I kind of feel like the safe bet is that Dramas will still be able to take this one. I'm inclined to agree. Um, Kron so far, yeah, last place on the global leaderboards. But let's, let's take a look at Dramas first, right? Dramas didn't have the best first half, I would say. But then if we look at his recent performance, he's won three out of his four most recent games, taking down Sip, Maxter, Avic, some big names there, before dropping a series against Chain last week or during the previous week of the broadcast. But Dramas is looking to be in really good shape. We saw some impressive plays come out of him. Even when he lost to Chain, it was absolutely not a blowout and he held his own well. Now, that unfortunately is just not the same that can be said about his opponent. I, I really try not to uh, focus on the negative too much, but the elephant in the room in this series is that Hron, let's be real here, has not had the most successful path. Hron is a legendary Quake Champions player, and I think especially if you look at that sort of, I would say, first half of the game's current life, Hron was a real serious threat. It isn't quite the same here. That's a lot of gray and not a lot of red. Only securing yeah. one victory so far. <sighs> it's not looking good, as some of no. them would say. But hey, look, week by week, you know who you're going to be fighting. You can prepare as much as you can. Everyone has different access to being able to prepare, I think. And I, I still feel like Dramas is just simply going to be the favorite here. It would be nice to see Hron get a victory, but... Is it realistic? I'm not so sure. I guess the remaining three maps will tell us that story. Also worth pointing out is that, yeah, he's only had that one win, right? But if we look at the losses, almost all of them have been zero to three, right? So he's only secured one map aside from that game that he won. All others he lost without securing a single map. So there's players whose win-loss might not be that great, but they're very consistent in at least getting one map even when they do lose. That's not the case with Kron, and that's why he's at the bottom of the leaderboard. Now, historically, catch up, Kron has played Dramas twice, and he's won both of those matchups within the Quake Pro League. But today, things are indeed very different, and just like you, I kind of fear for Kron going into this series. Times change, and uh, they players do. and their own journey will also change alongside it. Speaking of journey, picks and bands are ready, so we can see what are remaining half hour of maps is going to be in this first one. Molten Falls straight away, Blood Covenant and then Awoken. The Molten Falls taking the Nyx away straight away, Battle of the Lights but incredibly fast. The Slash comes out to play for dramas to the surprise of absolutely nobody. But that's not where the crouch sliding ends. It's going to be Strog for Awoken versus the Doom Slayer. Blood Covenant, the Athena removed as is becoming quite common and or standard I suppose on Blood Covenant because Athena is so good on that map and it also removes her being able to get picked on Awoken as well. So there's a lot of picks and bans here that make sense. Nothing really stands out as a, a out of the norm pick I would say. But mm -hmm. on the picks alone, Dramis has a lot of comfort here. We have the, I think just the understandable mobility for the two crouch sliders that we're seeing from Dramas and then the Blood Covenant. The Ranger is there. It's just going to give Dramas a fundamental game of Quake to play, but then that access to damage, access to maneuverability, access of just explosive combat, and that's something that Dramas can be very, very impressive at. On the opposite end of that, Ron, a lot of these picks feel quite safe to me. I know the Anarchy mm -hmm. in particular, yeah, it's a light champion, but you know, the inject is there, the instant access to a little bit of escape potential if you get caught in a bad situation, the vision on Blood Covenant, and then just 
basic mobility on Awoken that Galena was taking away. And to be fair, Galena could have been a pick there for Hron in theory. Uh, but we're going to just go in with a, a nice strong medium instead. I fully agree with you. I think that on map one and three, especially Dramis has the upper hand when it comes to picks, right? We know that Dramis is one of the best crowd sliders, not just in the Americas, but also in the entire Quake Pro League. And he's absolutely going to let that shine, that movement of his. The only map where I kind of feel like it might be the opposite is map two, Blood Covenant, DM6. This is widely considered to be one of Kron's better maps. And looking at the matchup, Visor historically almost always beats Ranger on Blood Covenant just because of how powerful the Piercing Sight is, just because of how easy it can be to keep your distance and just keep your opponent at bay. So Drams is really going to have to try and get up close and personal. But Kron, I think on map two, has the upper hand. So I'm going to say Dram is at least 2-1. And depending on the shape that Kron is, Kron is in, it could even be a 3-0. But Blood Covenant, I think that's going to be Kron's ticket to getting at least one map here. Yeah, these pick and bans really show how much Ron just did not want to fight Athena. Um, if you are in a position where you are only able to remove one option from your opponent, you had to make a choice. Do you take away Athena on a map that Athena is incredibly powerful on and also Dramas being a, a high-paced player? But then by doing so, you're leaving the remaining Crouch Slider in play on a map that that yeah. crouch slider makes more sense on. You know, it would make more sense to pick a strong on Awoken than it would be for a Slash, for example. Uh, so, yeah, bit of a decision to make, and I guess we'll find out if that decision is going to help him in any way. I, I definitely feel like I agree with your prediction here. I do sadly think a 3-0 could be likely, because even though on paper, just looking at the matchups on that second map, it could in theory be better for Hron. <sighs> The recent weeklies that he's been playing in, there just hasn't really been much success, if at all. So within the first couple of minutes, Dramas could get some sort of upper hand and then just keep the pressure on, right? And then even then, True. Ron could have a little bit of difficulty with the rail, perhaps maybe isn't able to establish that ranged game. I don't want to be too negative here, um, but let's just hope there's a, a little bit more going for him this time. And yeah, that second map could definitely work. We'll hope for his sake that it does, but Dramis, uh, for me, clear favorite. Same here. With that being said, we are jumping into the first map of the series, first map of the day even. We've got Kron, we've got Dramis. Air control versus crowd sliding, and we're starting it off on Dramis' point of view. Kron, actually. That's all right, I muted my microphone so I could have a sip of drink, so <laughs> I, was, I was far too late to take that one over. But being able to establish that rail already is Hron. And I think that the name of the game for almost all three of these maps for Hron is try and keep Dramis at arm's reach. You're going up against someone who's famous for, for that aggression and that explosive combat. And then at the same time, you're definitely outmaneuvered in the champion department. This is where Hron, oh, actually, Trap is sprung there from Dramis, but not enough to quite yet secure the frag. We're able to get ourselves back up to a nice basic stack. And Hron can now start to cycle, keep his stack nice and high. You can see already he's still got the inject, right? So this is going to be a bit of a green light, I suppose, for Hron to push forward and, and continue to be aggressive because you've still got that extra amount of stack kind of just sitting in your back pocket. Now the chase is on. Expecting Dramas to be waiting there, but not perhaps expecting the damage to be that high. That's, yeah, that's a rough one. Especially because I feel like Kron should have pushed in at Heavy earlier. Dramas was down to 15 points of health. Yeah, he had the Plasma Trail, but it wasn't covering everything. I think Kron could have just brute forced his way through, get the kill, walk away with Heavy, but he didn't do so. And now it's actually Dramas who walks away with the first frag, landing some beautiful rails right there. Ron's got to make a run for it. Oh, I like the play right there. Ron just hiding in the center of the map, not making any noise. We know how noisy that hoverboard can be. Ron, no doubt, very aware of that. But by Lucky doing so, it's, it's a horrible situation though, isn't it, Flea? Because the moment you get put into a, a near critical level of stack, you just know that your opponent is now using that opportunity to cycle around and pick up everything. However, that missed rail, that might be the opening. No, the shot doesn't connect. 
I'm not even convinced that he would have taken out Dramas in that position. He's going to push really far forward, force a exchange there. I mean, that was clearly deliberate, right? That was, we're going to force both of us to spawn again, see who gets a better position. Done tons of damage here. Uh, not enough, unfortunately, to stop the heavy from being picked up. But knowing that now at the moment, Kron probably going to be a little bit tender so the fight can continue. And that's what Dramis is currently going to do. Secure himself another frag here, three to zero. Try and get something off spawn. Looking for the right one. Oh, 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 nice little shot there. Good stuff there from Dramis. What does it do for Kron? I suppose. Oh, close range rail. The downtime is going to guarantee that he goes down. But so much damage there. Flea was dished out. Kron, not comfortable yet. Heavy helps, but not a huge amount of weaponry there. Just a rail and a oh. plasma gun. I mean, that's not going to do much. Oh, God. Too predictable on the getaway right there. Yeah, but Kron, like, he, he's gotten two frags. Gone for one on the scoreboard, but it's always really messy and kind of just, you know, going for yeah, the close combat rails, but that's not a reliable strategy. Meanwhile, Dramas in approaching this in a much more consistent manner. Putting himself four points in the lead already. An anarchy. He's fast, but slash. That's next level speed. And if it comes down to a runaway game, Ramis should be able to hold on to this. Scary game to play near the Mega. I guess I would say if Ron wasn't a little bit late on that one, dropping down and trying to get a few little bits of extra health down there unfortunately meant that he missed his rail shot. And I say missed the rail shot. There wasn't an angle for a shot to be made. So that's. Really unfortunate. You don't want to let someone pick up an item and get away without taking at least something. And normally a rail shot's a good little send-off that says, yeah, you picked up the item, but you're not going to get anywhere near as much utility from it. The chase is on. Ron critically low on stack and utility now. There's no armor to be found unless he can pick up a light that respawns soon. And the heavy itself, 15 seconds away from appearing. So, I mean, we're looking at a situation 100% dramas, and it's just his map to now bully and control. It absolutely is. The item delays are perfect for Dramas. 15 seconds in the Mega and the Heavy. He can just cycle them, especially when he's going to continue landing rails like that. There's nothing that Tron can do. Putting himself defensively, it's LG on LG. Decent amount of damage from Kron, but insufficient, not enough. With the stack difference there, that had to have been. Yeah. I can take this fight if I hit basically every single shot. And that's uh, not really how the cookie crumbles, I suppose. And the chase is going to continue here for Dramis, forcing Kron away from the heavy location, but with enough time to spare that Dramis is even able to deny the light. And this is when, oh, close range rail aside, this is where a battle of lights becomes the scariest for the player that's on the back foot. Dramis has collected every light armor for the most part, which now means that not only is he controlling all the armor, Ron is unable to pick any of it up. You're playing as a light champion. You are tender on the best of days. And Dramis clearly having a bit more accuracy in general. The rails are nice and consistent. And when that happens and you're in a Ron situation, what do you do? Because your opponent is now just out damaging you. Your opponent is keeping all of the means that you would stay alive with. It's complete control, but if anything, absolute denial. Ron has no comeback mechanic right now. You know, there's no means to bring himself back in just now. Both players have hit around the same number of rails. 11 for Dramas, 10 for Ron, but Dramas is landing them when they matter the most. He's able to close out the drag Ron, He's able to deal damage with the railgun, but never really in a way that allows him to take away an item. But maybe that changes now. Ron secures himself a heavy, but he's in bad shape. Doesn't have a lot of health to work with. He's got that inject. Chooses to hang on to it. He will survive. Now the next fight is going to be for Mega. Ron sneaking in from below. Promise. Figures out exactly where he is. Rockets coming through. Messy fight. And somehow Dramas still. 15 points of health is all he needed. To walk away with the frag. Now that kind of fight can be one that will cause a player who's already far behind to almost check out of the map that's playing. I mean, if we're looking at a situation where things could have really worked there for Kron to get a frag, that was the opportunity. But all things considered, this isn't the worst case scenario just yet. Kron was at least able to damage Dramis enough that he was able to spawn and then pick up both of the important items. You know, we just saw there Kron lost a little bit of a stack. That's no doubt going to be a fast-paced rocket jump to make sure that he can take a fight on the heavy. But the gear shift begins. Dramis is 10 frags in the lead. 
Three minutes are left on the clock. You're playing a champion that is faster than Anarchy, especially on a map like this. Dramas has no need to cement himself on this map. I think, you know, completely giving up every item might give an avenue for Kron to somewhat come back. But all Dramas has to do now is waste that time. He's already wasted 30 seconds. Secures himself another frag here. And perhaps a mountain too steep for Kron to climb on map number one. You know, I'm, I'm gonna call it. It's, it's gonna be GG, even if he gets the frag now. How do you chase he someone for 10 even. more frags, yeah? I mean, yeah. that's it. What do you do? And even there, right? It's Dramas again, nice. walking away with just a sliver of health. And here we go, Krong. Gets a frag, secures it before the Mega spawns as well. He can now kind of just loop into Dramas' rotation of the items. Mega first, making his way towards Heavy. Yeah, time is not on Kron's side right now. Even if he walks away with the heavy completely unharmed, which he will, he has to catch Dramas, and he has to catch him 10 bloody times in less than two minutes. That's the problem. You picked up an item uncontested, and you think, hang on a minute, why did I just pick this up without having any sort of challenge? Oh, it's because he's not here. Why is he not here? Because he's happy to give it up. He knows that he's got two minutes Ooh. left to go. That rocket was just rude on so many levels. And now a minute and a half to just run around and just do your thing. This was the, or is, the great benefit that these kind of champions can, can give a player is you mount a lead this gigantic you have the speed advantage the map may as well be over unless your opponent can do something miraculous to bring themselves back into the match as rare as that is you can just run away the remaining two or three minutes and it just takes them time to, to secure the frag the longer it takes to get even one here the greater chance you have of just winning it comfortably in that second half and that's really what's happened here we're looking at the scoreline now, becoming 16 to 2. Really, the map was decided many, many frags ago. This is just Ron pushing forward because why not? He's going to go around corners. He's probably going to go down. It just is what it is. And here comes another one. Indeed. Half a minute left to go. Absolute mathematical no. impossibility. Oh, right now, Dramas can take his hands off his keyboard. Just wait this one out for both players still. Want to keep warm, stay fresh for the next one, Kron. We talked about it before, beginning the series, right? Map 2, we both agreed, is the one where Kron has the better shot at. Blood Covenant, one of his best maps. Matchup that I think favors him quite significantly, playing Visor against uh, Ranger. So if Kron is going to mount a comeback, it's gonna be now. And I think it, like, it's good that this is map 2, right? If it would have been map 3, then you'd sit here and say like, oh, okay, well, yeah, maybe he'll win that one, but it's already over. But if he can really just turn the momentum right now, if he can find this groove, secure this map and keep going, Ron still has a chance. It's a small chance, but this is the one where he's got to do it. This favors him. It's the situation where I think the mental game can have its biggest significance, and that probably is why having the second map be the one that Ron on paper has the best chance on this is why it's good because if we're able to make it a 1-1 you can almost go into that final map uh, with a fresh new perspective maybe a, a little bit more confidence the ability to make a decision that you otherwise wouldn't really make something that might change the game for you and as we go into map two uh it was a rough first time over two to 19 being the final score many of those final frags being Hron kind of just trying to make chase because he may as well do it. And, you know, Dramas just sort of punishes that accordingly. A lot of chases that I doubt Hron would have made the first five minutes of the map, but that's just generally how those late game, high scoring maps go. A player will sometimes feel like, well, the divide is so big now, if I don't do something about it, I won't have time. And, and the clock, oh, the biggest enemy. I You could almost suggest the biggest enemy of the duel because it is such a motivator for decisions you do or don't make. How many players will look at the clock and think, I've got to do something, because if I don't do something now, I'm not going to have time. And so often that decision just doesn't work and it just makes yeah. the lead even bigger. However, Blood Covenant, our next destination, where the utility alone gives Kron a bit more of a fighting chance for 
I feel like that rocket damage, I don't know if you've noticed, but the damage that Drama is dealt with the rocket launcher alone was just a thousand points over anything that Kron did with any weapon. And I think that that just perfectly sums up how the game went. Because on Molten Falls, very often you see Railgun being the main weapon and LG, but the fact that it was rockets this time really showed that Dramas really had Kron's number, right? He was always on top of him, always dropping down, bullying him for every item, every choke point with that rocket. And Kron just didn't have an answer to it, so uh, Dramas absolutely dominated map 1. Map 2, let's see how this is gonna go. Dramas won the second map, he did make it 2-0. He certainly did, and in a convincing fashion as well. 20 frags versus Kron's 4, continuing well into the double digits for both of the first maps. Now map 3, this is again a tricky matchup I feel like for Kron, right? Dramas gets to run the Strog on Awoken, very powerful champion, especially when you're as good at crowd sliding as Dramas is. On the other hand, you've got Doom. Doom is a staple pick on this map, but with the nerf to the double jump, he's perhaps not as effective as he once was. But to kind of counter that, he's got a little bit more utility with that Berserk, with that active ability now. So Kron, definitely not a bad pick for this one, but looking at the first two maps and seeing how Kron lost map 2, even though we both agreed that he had the advantage there, paints a very, very worrying picture for this final map of the series. The second map went away the was a strong possibility. You know, we, we were talking in droves about how it, on paper, was a good opportunity for Hron to tie things up. But yeah. the matter was, Dramis was still Hron's opponent. And there is a, a set clash of styles there where Dramis is not afraid to be super constantly aggressive when he needs to be. We had seen that exactly come to pass in the first map. And just looking at the fact that, above all else, he still had Ranger use that could still have happened you know you can have all the utility in the world but if the opponent is all over over you and you have no room to move no room to pick anything up uh, it can still very much go the same way right and that's kind of what i'm worried about here i know that doom is going to have some of that more expected mobility as a double jump will provide on a map like this but dramas has the speed and dramas has Possibly the advantage up close as well, because that speed makes him a bit harder to hit than a static Doom Slayer. But we'll jump in now, and this is a, a, the only opportunity Kron is going to have now to get some points. You said it at the start of the show, you know, we look at those results. Kron has suffered a lot of 0-3 defeats. There's no mm -hmm. bonus points there to be made, and I really can't afford to have another one of those. Not an ideal start for Kron there either. He really wanted to get his hands on the railgun. Dramas again trying to deny that key weapon. Managing to land a good shot. But now Kron does have the opportunity to complete the unholy trinil. He now has his full arsenal at the ready. Every weapon he needs, and he's actually in a pretty decent position, especially... Oh, okay! What? That was unexpected. I was on Kron's point of view. Didn't quite see how that happened, but... He sent Dramas flying off the map over on the banana side. The beautiful rockets. I don't think either player was expecting that result, but hey, Kron takes those. And that's a nice, nice flurry of rails. 75% railgun accuracy and Kron, two points in the lead. Make it three. Wow, fantastic LG. I don't know, maybe this break has just given Kron an opportunity to wake up a little bit. I don't know. I don't know how early he woke up today. <laughs> An opportunity to get yourself a little bit more warmed up. Not that it matters now, as Dramis secures a frag, right as we were about to get an item spawn. So yeah, Dramis took a lot of damage, but it's not going to stop him from being able to bring himself back up and make some kind of chase here. Doesn't quite get the opening rail. Unfortunately, though, neither does Hron. There were two shots there that could have connected, but didn't. And that would have put Dramis in a much worse situation, especially as the items have just been picked up. So, you know, where would you go from there? Probably would have had to retreat, pick up some of the other items in the less favorable parts of the map, right? But not meant to be as Dramis pushes forward and makes chase once more, right before Kron can get the second rocket off. Dramis secures it. That rocket could have secured a trade, but didn't quite manage to shoot it. Ron kind of got lucky right there. He double jumped into the room, giving Dramis such an angle for a rail. He missed, but still, so much damage being dealt right now. Peeker used effectively once more. Because Ron didn't have any reliable weapons to take him down with. 
And there, just like that, Ramos turns it around, ties it back up. 3-2-3. Three three. Now it is Krom who is on the back foot. Now the one thing is that Dramas' stack isn't all that great. Krom, I don't know about that one. Full on aggressive with nothing but the nail gun ketchup. I like that Dramas didn't get ahead of himself there and he still swapped to the LG. I mean, that kind of fight, I think so many players would be tempted to just keep the rail out there and just try and go for that almost guaranteed shot of the jump pad and that. But I mean, it opens up a chance for it to miss and then you've got more work to do. Keep it nice and simple. Yeah, that was a very unusual situation on both sides. However, some rails real good from Dramas. They continue to be impressive as another shot is secured here. And that's now going to be three frags in the lead. It was a wonderful start for Fron, but feels like right now it's been just that. A good start and the rest of the map has been Dramas. It has only been three and a half minutes though. There's plenty more Awoken left to go, but Dramas now starting to match that pace a little bit. Opens up with a rail. Takes one of his own, doesn't get the kill shot, so both players now super, super weak. We have to disengage. Ron has to be more careful with his positioning. Many of those deaths he's given up in the past minute or two have just been because he pushed himself way too hard, too aggressively, getting out there in the middle of the room. Dramas. Getting pretty easy frags to clean up, so Ron has got to be a little bit more reserved, I think, with how he approaches these fights. I'll just jump in there and hope for the best. Gramis has figured that out right now. And he's gonna punish Kron for it too. But again, Kron, this is so risky, Ketchup. For all the damage he takes, he still, still contests for the Mega. You can only imagine is in some sort of position where it's like, I've got to try and do something. But the thing is, there is still time to work with. We yeah. haven't even hit the halfway point yet, so it's not, it's not desperation point yet. Ron's gonna be careful. I feel like he's been playing this as if he's, you know, down to the final minute or two and he has to make something happen, but no. He's got so much time to work with still. Slow it down. Pump the brakes. You know, go back to the fundamentals. Get that base stack up. Don't contest. All you've got is one, one weapon in your basic stack. Not when these rails continue to hit the way they do. And there's a Pika just to shut off any potential escape that Ron was going to try and do there. And now five minute warning and a sizable lead. Six frags in the lead now for Dramis. Dominantly one map, one and two. Looking like it could go the same way if Ron does not think of something fast to bring himself back into this fight. Because Dramis, I've got to say it, at no point in this series has he looked particularly tested. A lot of these frags that haven't gone his way, you know, he's kind of missed a few shots. Things haven't been fully tight. Uh, but the moment he tightens those things up, it's a very different story. Kron makes the push here, catches Dramas a little bit off guard, maybe. There's still an opportunity for Kron to bring this one back, but Rocket versus LG. Another Pika. Rocket answers that one nicely, but Kron secures the frag. Needs to get himself a bit of armor, though, because... Oh! Nice. Good shot. Even Excellent. More of real. those. Yeah. This might help create him an opportunity. Now, this is the moment where he needs to apply pressure. He's got a good idea of where Dramas is at. Misses the rail and he's now railable himself. He's got to be careful. Heavy up in just a second. He gets away with it. Oh, I think he's giving up Mega by doing this. Yeah, he has. Like he heard the teleporter and still decided to just chase through it. Giving Dramas a perfect route straight on the Mega. Even though Kron was actually in the better spot to just block it off put himself on top of it. Maybe he wasn't confident in his item timing. Maybe he thought Dramas was just gonna make a run for it over towards the LG. That's a missed opportunity for Chrome to really cement control. But uh, we can see the instant sort of plan B scenario play out here for Chrome, where the moment he knows there's an item being given up, he had to spend the 15 or so seconds on heavy side just to make sure he is the one that picks up that next item. Because if Dramas gets both of them, this comeback is going to be much, much harder to obtain. Three minutes to go, Dramas. Nowhere near as big of a lead as he had in the past two maps, so it's still within that realm of possibility. But it looks a lot like Dramas has gone for another gear shift. I don't think he's completely hiding away, but he's certainly not the one that's making chase. Looks like just angles are being set. Dramas is looking to get those opening shots on him. Now, Bron, 
Just like that, with one shot alone, it's now got significantly less stacks. Should there be a fight taking place, it's going to be much harder for Kron now. And look, I mean, looking at this from Kron's point of view, he's straight up can't see him. He knows where he is. He has a complete yeah. rough idea, but he just cannot get an angle together to land a shot. And when he does, Dramis is the one that's able to get first blood. He can get an opening rocket. He can get a rail around the corner. Here springs a trap near the next item. And I fear that that could be the beginning of the end here. Could very well be Ron a little early to take that fight at Mega. Because LG was looking solid in that engagement though, but so was Dramis. And now, no delay between the items. Makes it very difficult for Kron to swoop in and maybe get some rotation going, right? At this stage, you would really want there to be a sizable gap between Mega and Heavy so that you as the player on the back foot can just continue stringing them together as you make chase, as you start getting some of those frags on the board. That's not gonna happen. Oh, he needs this one, Kron, but all oh, that did not go the way he wanted. He needs to apply pressure right now. Can't let Dramas get away. Oh, Dramas. Just in time through the telly. I feel like if Juan had any sort of chance catch up, it was in that previous engagement. And now I think it's over and done. It's going to take too long to get him. Every frag from Kron is going to have to be clean. He's not going to be able to take too much damage. He has to get five back to back just to even tie things up. And even a fight like that, I mean, what is Kron supposed to do? Even if he got that fight, he would have been too weak to push. And uh, that just comes down to Dramas doing plenty enough of the early work to keep himself in a comfortable position. He had to just continue to play a strong game. And the positioning choice, like the, the, the angles that he chose to not necessarily hide around the corner, but he was definitely the defensive player. We were yeah. watching Hron's point of view for what felt like a couple of minutes, and although every step of the way, Hron pretty much knew where Dramas was. I mean, it's awoken. It's not, not a particularly um, hard map to find people on, but those angles were impossible for, Hron, uh, for Hron to do anything about. So all in all, I think a rather frustrating, frustrating yeah. map for Hron. No dot, no dot. He got off to a really good start, getting three frags very early on, but then was unable to hold on to them. Dramas tied it up, and then I think that Kron just started making a lot of mistakes, being too aggressive, taking too many fights, even though he had no business being there. And then before you know it, you're four frags behind, and then you've got to make a sizable comeback happen. If Kron had just stuck to the basics a bit more, focused on getting his stack up, sneakily getting, you know, all the weapons that he needed instead of constantly challenging, probably would have had a better shot there. Now, I also think that when it came down to the champion pick, right, Dramas had the advantage from the start, and he also made much better use of the ability, right? How much did we see Chrom benefit from picking Doom? There were a few jumps, of course, that he makes here and there, right, using the double jump, but other than that, I don't think we saw the Berserk even once, and even with just the double jump, I don't feel like it mattered all that much, whereas Dramas was making good work out of that peeker. Constantly doing damage, catching Kron by surprise when he had no weapons to deal with the robot, and then just, yeah, quickly hopping behind the pillar, pulling out that peeker, and getting a frag. So, Dramis made really good use of his ability, and Kron just didn't get the same value out of his pick. And sadly, it resulted in three maps dominantly won here by Dramis. The third was, definitely think you could say it was the closest of the three for Good chunk of it, but the moment drama started to take that lead and mount that aggression, it was just Kron was just on the end of a string almost. All three of those maps, like Dramas, at an early stage took the control and is essentially, yeah, I'm the one in the driver's seat now. The champion picks definitely reflected that. You know, I've got more mobility. I'm able to almost lead you into positions where you kind of have to do something, but realistically, you, you don't want to. Right. And from that point, I can just get a bunch of damage. I can get a surprise rocket here. I can get maybe a rail as you come around the corner. And it just felt like a non-stop uphill struggle for Hron in all three of those maps, which is a shame because it does now mean that Hron continues that uh, string of unfortunate series, right? You know, lower yeah. end on the leaderboard now, and this certainly isn't going to help matters, but it's definitely going to make Dramas feel a little bit better. This was a great result for him as a player who's definitely been kind of here and there in this season. So any 3-0 you can secure, I think you'll, you'll happily take those.
Absolutely, yeah. This is like we're entering the final stage kind of, of the season, right? After today, there's going to be six more weeks left to go. So obviously, still, still a whole lot of cash, a lot of points to be earned. But we're definitely starting to enter, you know, to the closing stages of this season. And now players are really battling to get out of that danger zone. Dramas, I think, is still just within it. Maybe not anymore after today's win. But yeah, he's still... Th this is going to help him out tremendously. That's very true. Well... An interesting start to the day for sure. We're now going to go for a break, and when we return, we're going to go into our next matchup, Kilson versus Toxic. Not one to be missed. See you in a bit.